working, man, just shooting, dog. You know what I'm saying? Got a little break in between, so I wanted to definitely come come out and, uh, you know. Yeah. What's up, y'all, man? <laughs> Yo, thanks for joining us here. I really oh, appreciate pleasure, it. Man, thanks for having me. Um, so I'm just going to do a little intro, then we can, you know, begin to start. Cool. Uh, hey, everyone. We're here with Wilson Ramirez, um, star of Kilroy. Um, I'm Noah Godfrey Lopez. This is Victor Ramirez, and we're from WEPA. So, Ramirez, how are you? How are you doing today? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm blessed, man. It's right here, uh, chilling in uh, in Orange, California. I flew in yesterday, and I'm right here with one of my friends, Rex. Uh, mm-hmm. Movie called In His Hands with Raul Salomon. He's a professional boxer, up and coming. Very good. Uh, very good uh, with his hands. And the okay. movie's called In His Hands. So here we are. Nice. That's awesome, man. You're always grinding, yeah. huh? Yeah. Well, I'm grateful, man. You know, I could have shut it down plenty of times, but I just, God kept telling me, just keep going. And, you know, you get, you get, you know, sometimes you have doubt, especially with the COVID and you're like, ah, life's over, you know? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm sure everybody can kind of, you know, relate to that in a sense, but just got to put the pedal to the metal, man. Just got to go for it. I mean, stuff's going to happen. You just got to keep going, you know? But yeah, it's been, exactly. going, it's been getting better. Yeah, the, the grind doesn't stop, bro. <laughs> the grind doesn't no, stop. No, I don't. Kobe tried to stop it, but yeah, the grind don't stop. <laughs> That's what I was saying, man. So, um, anyways, um, you just finished one of your films, uh, Kilroy, and everything. So, yeah. I'm curious about what was your process in becoming Ernest Kilroy himself? Like, oh uh, well, you know, it just was a lot of research, a lot, a lot of research, um, gathering stuff from YouTube, uh, speaking to him, um, uh, kind of like a. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, break, uh, uh, um, bridging the gap. What I dealt with in my life, what I related to his life, and implemented, and just you know, just went from there, and just you know, uh, it was just more of a feeling, you know. Uh, I, I understand what life he was in, and it was awesome to play him. You know what I'm saying? I get to be kind of like that guy. You know what I'm saying? I kind of envied those guys before, and. You know, I'm glad I never did, and I got I got to be able to to uh, do it in this type of form. You know, so it was cool. So to be able to, because you mentioned how you talked to him a little bit, uh huh. His character, or well, not his character, but about himself. So how was that whole thing? Just talking. It, it was. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. It was scary at first. I mean, you know, <laughs> he was. You know, he's. You know, he's who he was, and um, I always give a lot of. I always give people respect. Uh, of course, first, you know, a lot of respect, and then they determine how they're gonna, how it's gonna fly. Cause they're gonna keep the respect, or they're gonna lose respect. You know, mm-hmm. he, he I didn't lose respect for me, but I did soften or my fear of <laughs> of his, of his, you know, ego, or whatever it was. Not that he had one, but just his aura yeah. is just, you know, I started understanding. Well, you know, what? he's not, he's, he's, that, he was that guy, and he's this guy, and and then I started thinking, you know. Be positive, man, because he's he's a good dude and he always prayed for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, he would call me and pray for me, and uh, we talked about a lot of things. And it, it was it was surreal, man, because you know, like I said, he did forty years in and out of jail, some of the most notorious jails in California, and ran one of the most uh, organized uh, criminal enterprises in the world. And um, to get to talk to him and to share, to, he's a very funny guy. You know, oh, yeah. uh, very, very uh, insightful, very, you know, he, he understands what's going on in this world. And, and um, he always gives it, he always leaves it to God for, at la- first and last, you know. And that's awesome to, for a guy like that to bow down and, and say, you know what, I'm, I'm with, he always said, I'm with the king of king, lords of lords. I jumped into that gang. Mm-hmm. I'm out of, the, I never left the other gang, but I jumped into something better, you know. So it was cool, very cool. No, that's beautiful to hear, man. The fact that an actor like me, who's I've been doing it 11 years, and it's definitely 11 years sounds like a lot, but depending on opportunity, you can either further your career or you can still kind of be in the same place. I didn't, I wasn't in the same place, but I was getting a lot of, uh, I'm a day player. So, you know, I haven't got, uh, re- uh, you know, recurring guest stars, but I haven't got like a series regular mm-hmm. or, or stuff that's going to kind of solidify me as like a working actor. And you know, I took a, I took a, I took a step, a big step to do this, this uh, uh, movie because um, it was a chance for me to to, to play a lead. And 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 there's not too many leads out there for a guy who's been, you know, typecast as a gangster 
or, uh, you know, or, or those type of characters. And so I jumped on it, you know, and I, and I said, you know what, man, I, I understand the, well, the criminal, what the, ass, the whole thing that surrounds him. But I knew that it was a faith based movie. And I said, you know what, I'm doing it because of that, because I know um, that God is going to protect me. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it, it, it's uh, I don't know, I don't want to get too into it, but you know what I'm saying? So the fact that I got selected uh, was, like I said, an opportunity, opportunity of a lifetime. And I took it. Of course. That's amazing. So then, uh, what about like this two, uh, sorry, true story made you intrigued to star in this besides the fact, you know, you're starring in it. What made you want to? Like I said, man, it's just, you know, I envied those kind of guys. And this guy had like, it seemed like he, it just, you know, you always want to play a mob movie, you know, you always want to play in a, it was, yeah. you know, casino and Goodfellas and you always want to do these movies like, oh man, you know what I'm saying? Like, look at Pesci, look at De Niro. Look at uh, Leota, look at all these guys, look at, look at, um, 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 Leo Rivera, look at, uh, you know, all these guys, almost these guys who, who've done these gangster films and kind of always remembered as, you know, oh, that's that guy from America, you know, oh, that's that guy from Blood In, Blood Out. Yeah. And I always want, man, I was like, man, this is my chance to be. And then he wasn't a rat. He was glorifying uh, the Lord. And I just said, man, it's, it's, it's meant to be, you know, it has yeah. to be meant to be. I, I just, there was no other way around it. I just was like, you know, I was excited about it. That's awesome. Yeah, you saw your chance, you, you took it, you you got to be a gangster, but a gangster who's faithful. In the- yeah, gangster that's faithful. Yeah. It's awesome, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's, it's one of those things, it's like it wasn't a gangster that stays a gangster and dies a gangster and, yeah. and lived a treacherous life and still is in command of a treacherous organization. It's more like he did this, he did that, God brought him back. To, to where God wanted him, and he, he you know, unfortunately, he passed, uh, but, yeah. you know, he, he remained in God's, in God's, uh, God's power, God's, God's presence, you know what I'm saying? God, God, was, he's with God. So, so like, okay, so speaking of God and Jesus and everything, right, we see later in the film, you know, Kil- Kilroy starts changing his life, and he mm-hmm. accepts religion, but, like, what do you think made him decide to change it all up for religion and everything? You know? I think I think as an addict, as a person who's done like myself, you always want to find a higher power that's going to alleviate uh, the pain that you're in. Because, I mean, as much as we get involved in bad things and do bad things, we really want to stop, man. You know, we don't want to be living this life. And, you know, people just can't stand us, don't want to be around us, don't trust us, don't believe in us. You know what I'm saying? You want to be different. And sometimes, you know, you can't escape it, but, you know, his his aunt staying on him and coming to him at that very moment mm-hmm. and telling him, you know, you're going to, you got to change too much. And he thought she was crazy on dope and he wanted some of that, you know, some of that, whatever she had. And he got it. He got a, he got a dose of the Holy Ghost, you know, and like he said, and and he never he never strayed from it you know from what the stories say he stayed faithful he always yeah. stayed faithful and that's that's a man that is trusting in in the power of the lord you know because he commanded things he pointed and three people got you know got done on the other side of the street and he wasn't that no more you know he wasn't that no more yeah yeah no that's that's great bro um and you you saying how he you know he kept on this whole religious path throughout after after his life in the gang and everything like that. It's great. So like, well, it's not no act. It yeah. wasn't no act. No act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you can't pick that. Up. You can't change, pick up. You know, Kilroy was you know a man of God for sure. That's crazy. Yeah, you can't pick that forever. You know, sooner or later the the truth comes out and he stayed faithful from what you could see in his life and all that stuff he started doing with you know, the gang and everybody else try to point the young youth to the right direction and stuff. And even yeah. the choice of this movie and stuff and the way that he wanted it to be portrayed uh, is, is, is testament to that. Mm-hmm. Yep. What's the other questions? Sorry. Um, so speaking of how, you know, later in life, you changed to uh, well, and everything, right? But Say what? what? Uh, how he followed the path of Jesus and God and right. everything, right? Right. Um, but in the film, you know, one of the rules was 
once you're in LM, you can never leave, right? Uh-huh. So how right. He, he was able to balance both the gang life and then, you know, Jesus uh, in his life now. How would Well, I think once he turned to God, he left the gang alone. You know, I think that's how he balanced it. He said, I'm done. I'm done. And I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to uh, sway in what I feel. And the honorable thing about these men is if you do find something, a power that will give you salvation, make you feel um, that you can turn another page, as long as you're real, like the movie said, they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll basically leave you alone. I mean, you know, for the, for the most part, it's, it's like uh, Brian Johnson who plays uh, uh, Joe Morgan in the movie. He says, you know, we got other things to worry about. We ain't got time for him as long as he's not an informant. He's not talking about us and letting stuff, you know, letting stuff out. Then we're okay, you know, because he's 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 not he's no more. He's he's with he's with some something yeah. something higher, you know. So that I think that's how that's how we balanced it. There was no balance. The balance was I'm done, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm balancing myself with God. That's my balance, you know. So he found he found a loophole. In the uh, the, the MLA laws, you can say that. You can say that too. And 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 you know, and through God's grace, he was able to. Like, was he the first one to do it? Like, was he the one who found that loophole? And then after that, well, in the in the movie, Nico got killed, but Nico was like one of the first ones. And then uh, Big Big D was another. Art Blahos is another. Um, the first success. There's a couple more. Woody, no, 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 I'm sorry, not Woody. Woody wasn't, I don't think he was in the organization, but he, he was connected with them. But yeah, um, keep it keep it where I'm at. Yeah, so there's, there's, a, there's like a couple others that stayed faithful with the Lord, but were part of, you know, the organization, yes. Mm-hmm. Great. And did you find it hard for, for yourself, you know, you you came in like more of a, the killer mentality of the film, and then later you had to kind of switch it to be more of a different mentality, a different uh, person, because that's what happened with Kilroy, right? You kind of changed uh-huh. the way of thinking. Did you find that difficult yourself having? No, no, right? No, I didn't. I know because I because I'm I'm uh, this this thing on top of my neck doesn't work, and so you know um, I have and I I speak for myself only, but I have a lot of things that go on in my head. Mm. Um, you know. And I deal with a lot of things. I, I I fall, I get back up. Yeah. You know, I I, I want to do things that you know make me want to go back to my old ways, and I have to. So I and like I said, bridging that gap, understanding who he was and who he is now. Who mm-hmm. was Tony or, or me? You know, Wilson, and who who am I now? And the art of acting and being able to bring that to life, and you know, and and, and being on camera and being able to to give that to the to the audience is what it's what, it's what makes actors actors you know it makes it believable and it's it's it's, it's able to transcend and uh you know i've been getting a good feedback from everybody i'm very grateful that everybody's having a great feedback with it and you know my dream is for it to be a cult classic it'd be great it would be great to always be remembered as that hey you know yeah, I, you know, I actually I found it interesting the way um, the story formatting was of the film, mm-hmm. because um, the film wasn't not uh, wasn't linear at all. You went from the present time film to the past, to doing these flashbacks and everything, to back to like the present in a sense, right? Uh-huh. Instead of just sticking to a linear story where we saw you know Kilroy starting from a child and then we see him slowly grow, grow, grow into his adulthood. Right. Him. What was what was the uh, mindset of that? Why why did you guys do the process and made the stories story into that instead of just one linear type of story? I don't know. I, I just I just felt like there was so much of the story that needed to be told, and it yeah. just it it made it it made it it made it right to show the beginning and then like you know the prison and going back to mm-hmm. uh, you know different the, the way it just moved back and forth i think it fit it it, it fit the it fit the storyline the way it was coming um and it i mean i, I think they did it the right way I, I really you know i don't know exactly um why but that's how i liked it i liked the way it was it was it was set up and um you know i i think i think it was better that way to go past in the present especially with the sun you know seeing the past and then going back and then seeing the good and 
and how his dad and him finally are developing some type of relationship mm-hmm. um, when, uh, you know, when, you know, when they changed the prison uh, in the cell and they had to, uh, you know, they had to kind of switch places and he still kept it a uh, organizational business, mm-hmm. but, you know, he had, he had to, I don't know, having no emotions and keeping that away, but being able to share those emotions. Yeah. You know, it, it just it just made it right, man. Like I said, I definitely agree. The nonlinear it worked. cutting it really worked, worked because yeah. you, it triggered more of emotion in yes. a sense, right? Right. Going back and forth and seeing the differences and everything, it definitely triggered more of the emotion, which I'm sure that's what you guys uh-huh. for, right? Yeah, I agree, and I, and I like that. I like that it was able to. We I was able to. People would call me and tell me they related and they liked. They like that it felt, they felt, they just felt in, involved in the movie, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, so for myself and uh, Victor, we noticed one of the things was that, um, you know, with these incarcerated men in the, in the prison and everything, normally you, you notice how dangerous these people are. And there's no doubt that, you know, these the people that were in the film were dangerous, right? But mm-hmm. the film was also to show that these criminals are more than just criminals. They're humans with feelings, emotions, and this sense of brotherhood, you know? Yeah. But what was, was that intended in the movie? Was that what you, you guys were trying to show, showcase? Were, were you guys trying to humanize the, the, the men in? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a humanization that goes with being locked up, you know? There's a, there's a mm-hmm. way you have to function. You know, there's a way you function in there. You know, it's it's even friends that I know that come out still have 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 to kind of de- depress or, or you know, like depressed from from all that stuff, man. It's it's definitely a a, a, unif- a unity type thing that they have that's very tight knit. Um, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it was like family, right? You know, when they were sitting down and eating and. And playing checkers and all that stuff it was just like yeah it was funny. in prison in, in 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 the in the prisons in in california it's segregated you know so you ride with the south side car or the black car or the Aryan car you, you don't mingle you don't mingle you know and so that you have to bond with your race whatever it is you know and you know it's it's way different right then i'm from you know i'm originally from new jersey so coming out from new jersey and then I've been all over, so really I'm a nomad, you know, because of my dad's job and stuff. But I've been all over the, the country and landing in California, which I, I lived there the longest at all, everywhere. Um, you know, it was it was difficult because I had I had black friends and this and that. And when I when I was um, involved in the gang and I was you know guilty by association, um, there you know there was some racism involved, you know, and it was tough it was tough to swallow sometimes because I. I didn't, I wasn't like that, you know, but I sometimes was accustomed to, to in acting, you know, you're, you're able to be, a, you know, a, a versatile and stuff. And I had to be versatile and stuff. I was always, that, I guess it's a skill set that I had and uh, kind of like Donnie Brasco, not Donnie, not being that kind of person, but just able to, you know, change who you are, like a chameleon and stuff like that and, and fit in. Um, so I, I always had the acting in me, you know what I'm saying? It just, so it just goes to show, you know, but that's where I was, you know, just, that's how it is in, 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 uh, in California, you know? And, and so w- when we saw that everybody was with like Familia in there and we're humanizing it, one of the most powerful moments was like you were talking about when the sun and, and Kilroy were, were, were shifting and he had right. no emotion. And I thought, like, hmm, if that was me and that was my son, is he showing no emotion to be like, hey, I'm going to treat him the same way I treat everybody? Or is it him trying to protect his son? It was, it was very, like, it was very tense. And it was a very, like, what was that moment about? Like, you know, in, 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 did Kilroy tell you, like, how? Because later on, he apologizes he, about it, right? Yeah, he didn't tell me that one and stuff. But the way I took it was, it was a moment where, like, I'm being free. And then my son's going to take my cell. I didn't know how I felt about that. And I think I was already getting to the point where I was having enough and having enough of this life. Mm -hmm. And in, in the scene, I, my choice was when he would look away, my heart would break. And it was a sense of weakness that I didn't show, but I showed, I tried to, 
hopefully let the camera capture it. But that's kind of was like almost that was not almost the kind of breaking point for me mm -hmm. when, you know, when I would with the way I felt with my son, because I, I wanted to be there for him. And I didn't know I didn't I didn't know no other way. So I had to I had to had to play had to be tough. We, we got to go. OK, sorry. And, you know, so it, it's the machismo. It's it's the, you know, not holding your mud. Don't let, don't let, don't show no uh, emotion. You know what I'm saying? But I couldn't help it. It was my son. I thought about my son. Mm -hmm. And I thought about what if that would happen? And I was like, oh, man. You know, so it was just intense. And, you know. It, it was just a mixture of uh, emotions for you specifically, right? You went through the journey too then. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I have my son's and daughters that, you know, so I have some that, that, that see me all, quite often and other ones where, you know, I, I haven't been the best. And so I can pick up and feel those emotions that I'm sure Kilroy had, you know, uh, yeah. Roy, formerly known as Kilroy, you know, uh, he, he always liked to be called Roy. Uh, he didn't okay. like, you know, Kilroy was like a, you know, a street name and he always wanted to be, uh, he always told me, call me Roy, you know, and I felt, I felt good. To call him Roy, you know, everybody's like, oh, yeah, I'll call you Roy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I was like, yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> what do you say, bud? You, know, I was like, you want me to call you? <laughs> yeah, 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 right. You know, so, but yeah, that's, you know, that's why I took it and I felt like it'd be, it'd be good, it'd be good movie, movie magic, but at the same time, it, I wanted to bring that emotion, like, what would if Roy really felt like this? Because I don't think he felt like, you know, I thought I, I'm sure he thought about his family. I'm sure towards the end of his, to the ends of his time in in the joint, he was tired, man. Yeah, he was tired of the same old, same old. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. um, he got a chance. He had a chance to move to make something different happen in his in his in his life, and he did. You know, when so many other guys are living their life forever in there, and they're doing dope to escape, and 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 still causing ruckus because they're angrier. You know what I'm saying? Or you can't speak in front of them and tell them when you're leaving because they're gonna they're gonna do something to you if they find out that you have less time than them. Yeah, it's, it's intense. You know, we don't realize what we do to ourselves. I'm grateful by the grace of God to, to be out here and be able to do what I want to do, which I easily could have stayed in, could have been in there and stayed in there, if 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 those cops would have rolled up at the time at the right time or or in, in, or things like that. And, and and Kilroy had so many times he had to stay in because of what he did and he finally he got a chance to go and he did he did the right thing you know yeah that's that's honorable it's honorable a man like that to be saved and to be washed away of his sins when other people like they did with 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 uh with paul so, who turned to saul and they killed christians and then it was like wait a minute why are you riding with us well i'm a christian now uh, you know imagine the people that wanted to kill him that wanted to do him people they're one of the toughest guys out there right in the Bible, yeah, you know, he 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 had no he had no shame. He he, mur he murdered Steve. He didn't care. He 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 was like a shot caller. He he pointed and people died. Mm -hmm. You know, Kilroy and Kilroy had a chance to, to do to do to do the right thing. And who's to say out here did he make it to heaven or not? I think he did. Why not? I Why think, think negative? You know, be positive about it. I think I think he did the honorable thing. He did the right thing for his family. People, his family mourns him. Everybody makes mistakes. It's not what you do in your past, but how you come out at the end, you know? Sure. And that's why I love Roy, because uh, it was just, it's a great story. Something that can impact people, make them come to God and say, you know what? If he did it, I can do it. I can change. He could, look how he had it. Look how his life was, you know? Which is what you're showcasing. You're trying to show people, that, bro, you can change whenever you, when you accept the change in it, or you, you take the change, Hopefully. right? If yeah. God, God is always giving us a chance out, always mm -hmm. giving us an out. We just, we just never know. We think, oh, you know, I'll wake up tomorrow, you know, maybe I'll change tomorrow. And then that time <laughs> might not come. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it's real when you really think about it. Like, man, I can get killed today or something can happen. I can fall in a manhole. And what I was going to do ain't going to happen because I didn't just make, be eager, you know, be eager to change, be ready to go, not yeah man, let me let me do this one more thing and then i'll be back you know yeah so, you know but that's what happens man we don't we don't take we don't take the bible we don't take what god's lessons are to heart until it's too late man i think we got one more question i know you got to get going uh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, we don't want to keep you too long and get, make you late for uh, next scene and stuff. So yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> hey, I gotta get back on a plane too. I gotta fly back. Oh God. Uh, the night time there, it's cool, man. I, I'm grateful, man. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I'm grateful. I, the only thing I miss is my fam. Let's see. Yeah. yeah. Grateful to be here. Grateful to be doing what I gotta do. But what's up? Yeah. So in the movie, you know, we see that um, the four original LMA members, the ones who started the whole thing, right? Uh -huh. uh, we see them, they come up with this whole rules and prison and everything. And they basically orchestrate the whole Mexican mafia in prison. So uh -huh. how, were they, how were they able to do something like that and enforce it yeah, how, while how being in prison? They came up with their, you know, the laws of like, engagement. I mean, you know, I, know. I, mean, I don't know. know. All I can say is, you know, you guys, if you're, if, like, like you're, you're running a business, right? And you, you yeah. want to make it the best business possible, right? So you'll come up with these rules. And you'll, 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 you'll have, you know, you'll get your guys focused on being driven to execute this, right? Hmm. And so they're in prison and they got to defend themselves. And everybody else may have, a, you know, this and that. And they're like, well, you know what? I want it. I want this. Uh, we're big and bad, too. And I want to be powerful. I want to own, I want to own the yard. I mean, think about what their mentality might be, you know? I want to be able to do this. I want to call the shots in this place or any other place. So they put it together, you know. I don't know how it happened. I, from what I saw, I, I, I know, but I can only imagine what their thoughts was, you know, how they, how they said, you know what, we're gonna be the biggest baddest here, and this is how it's gonna happen, you know, and and this is how we're gonna orchestrate it, and then you'll see, you know. And he said, man, he went to Quentin, and then the guy stayed at at, at, at uh, Duval at Technical Institute, and then he said all them guys came up. Mm -hmm. All of them guys came up and he said they 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 had Quentin locked down. Wow. It's, it's it's a it's a mentality you gotta That's have of man. leadership of the manipulation. It's bravery, whatever it is, to make people say, you know what, I'm gonna trust these dudes. And it's, it was only a handful of cats. It, you know, it wasn't it's still in this day the organization is not much. It's only a I don't know a couple. I don't I don't know how many, yeah, but it's not more than <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know. It's not more than two hundred. It's it's not many, yeah. You know, but they they you know I, there was a member of Sparta, three hundred. Yeah, mm -hmm. three hundred pushed back a whole army because they had they had they had the nuts. You know, what I'm yeah. saying they had what it took, yeah. and they wasn't going to get phased. Imagine that those guys can move mountains and and it's just you know. So and, yeah, that's that's how I feel. You know, like, and and you know what's amazing about that is that you know. That, that they think like corporate CEOs in America. And imagine- Most intelligent people imagine, you'll know, bro, yep. Yeah, imagine through your movie, we inspire, you know, youth to think like that and use mm -hmm. that, that MM mentality, the unity mentality, the 300 mentality to create mm -hmm. a corporation that will change the world. And yeah. Your movie, a cult classic. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's, that's America. <laughs> you do anything, right? <laughs> You could you can make any choice you want. You can say I'm gonna be good, or I'm gonna do bad. And yeah. either way, you can you can raise you can rise to the top of the hill. You know, so that's that's uh, it's America, man, for real. Well, Wilson Ramirez, I'm, I'm thank you for taking this uh, interview with us. I know you're on set right now, and you got you're gonna be on call right now. They're about to call you back. So I just wanted to say thank you very much for being a part of this. If you have any last words that you want to say right thank now. You. Just you know, I'm thankful for you guys, man. I know you guys are, are, are new and, and raising up, and I would like to hopefully, you know, be able to we rise up together. You know, I, I, I like you guys' vibe, and uh, I believe, you know, because I don't, I just don't do many interviews anymore because it could be monotonous. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I felt good about what you guys are doing, and uh, I, you know, I, 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 I tip my hat off to you guys, and uh, you know, everybody out there, watch Amazon, go to Amazon Prime, Prime Video, and watch Kill Roy. I think. I think you guys will have uh, an open mind and, you know, it's, it's a great redemption story, great trusting story. And it's a great love story, you know, cause uh, in, in the end, God get God gets what he wants. He gets, he gets his love back and that's where we're, I'm getting choked up. Man, you know, I just, man, you guys don't know, man. That means you care. You're passionate for him, bro. That's yeah, bro. I, I'm yeah. grateful for him, man. I always want him to know that. I always told him, man, it, it's nothing else more than just being able to be you and mm -hmm. to share your story, bro. It means nothing. Money means nothing to me. 
mm-hmm. I'm I'm not rich, you know. And if I am, I'll still be humble because I know what it is to be poor. I know what it was like. Mm-hmm. Trust, trust me. I know anybody out there knows what poor is, feels like. And you just have to be grateful if God gives you money, man. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it's it's a blessing, man. Where no matter what, I'm, yeah. I'm I I stay loving to my family and 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 to the people that I care the most. And, you know, I care about you guys too, man. I think you guys are doing a great job out there, man. Just keep on pushing that raised by Latinos and make it happen, man. You know, and and uh, hopefully we we get we get our spots out there, man. We really make it happen, and we can show our our, our who what we are, our creations. You know. Yeah, yeah man. And, and and just so you know, um, Kilroy, uh, the movie that you did is a cult classic for me. It will be in my library. It will be framed in my in my my shrine downstairs with all the <laughs> photos and art that I have and. Oh, yeah. I will share it with everybody I can. And thank you so much for everything. Thank you. That's beautiful. Thank you, man. I appreciate you guys. Uh, with that, um, everyone watching, I just want to say thank you for watching. This is Wilson Ramirez, star of Kilroy. This is Noah Godfrey Lopez from WEPA and then Victor Ramirez from WEPA. Just like say thank you very much again, Wilson, for appearing. And uh, have a right. blessed day. Have a blessed day. So, all right. You guys take care, okay? All right. All right. Peace. Peace. Have a good one.